not just the rich or the strong or the mighty or the elite or the powerful, but whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. How wonderful that is. Isaiah chapter number 6, continuing on tonight with our... Here in Isaiah chapter number 6, we find the great prophet, the man of God, Isaiah, having a heavenly vision. He said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And Isaiah began to describe these angels that he called seraphims, that were standing above the, the throne of God. Then we cry, we holy, 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 Lord. and we let the, the presence of God, God fill the house. Amen. I want to say tonight, I want you to think about this. We have a promise from God in His Word. He said if two or three are gathered in His name, that He shall be in the midst. I want to ask you a question. How many times do we gather together? And it seems like God is a long ways off. And there'll be 70 or 80 or 100 of us. Does it mean that our hearts are not in the right place? Does it mean that we're not worshiping God like we ought to? Does it mean that our minds are on other things? How far away are we from God when we come to His house? Can we get our minds on the Lord? Can we worship Him tonight in spirit and in truth? Can we give God praise, honor, and glory not only for what He's done. You know it's so easy for some people to come to the house of God on a Wednesday night or a Sunday morning and they say, boy, it's been a good week. Boy, I tell you, everything's went great. And you can worship God a little bit for what He's done. He's been good to you. And He's blessed you. But how about we learn to just worship God for who He is. And if you learn to worship God for who He is, you can come in even if it's not been a good week. Even if you've not felt good. Even if things didn't go your way. Even if you've had trouble. And you can still right back and worship God. You can sing the old songs. You can shout to the heavens. You can fall in the altar and pray. Praise God when you learn to worship God for who He is. Do you realize tonight that the angels worship God for who He is? They are His Creator. They understand that God made them. They have the utmost reverence and respect for the Lord of hosts, for the Lord God Almighty. They said the earth is full of His glory. They worship God and cry out, Holy, Holy, Holy. And it was the worship of God that convicted Isaiah. He said, I am a man of unclean lips. It ought to be hard for the sinner to sit or stand in the presence of the righteous. We ought to be talking about Jesus so much and so thankful and praising Him so much and testifying and bragging on Him so much that anybody that ain't right with God would begin to feel uncomfortable. They would begin to think, man, there's something missing in my life. Boy, I tell you, it used to convict me being around people that love the Lord. It ain't hard to tell somebody that loves God, is it? Here in verse number 5, Isaiah was convicted. I want you to notice in verse number 6 what takes place. Verse 6, the Bible said, Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. In verse 6, the action of the seraphim. The seraphim got a live coal in his hand which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. This seraphim flies over, walks over to the altar of God, the burning, fiery altar of God, and takes a live coal right off the altar with a set of tongs and carries that coal in his hand over to Isaiah. And the Bible teaches us that this servant takes this live, hot, burning coal and touches the prophet's lips. Praise God. We see that when the live coal touches his lips, that he was made clean. This is the fire of God. When the fire of God falls on you, 
gets a hold of you, touches you, my friend, something's going to happen. I praise God tonight for the fire of God. Amen. I want to ask you a question tonight. Church, I want you to think about it. I really want you to think in your mind. How long's it been since you personally have experienced or felt the fire of God? How long has it been since you felt something off the burning altar of God come down and touch you and cleanse you and purge you and help you? My friends, what we need tonight is an experience with the fiery altar of God. Something that will change our life and change our hearts and change our outlooks. Amen. 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 Just like that the Bible says, He was made clean. It didn't take a process. It didn't take a little bit of time. Some people I believe tonight are afraid of the fire of God. I'm afraid to not have it around. I want the fire of God. I need the fire of God. And we need to be praying for more of the fire and the power of God in our church services, in our lives. We need to be praying and begging God for more of it. We need to be praying. He said, how much more shall the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit unto them that ask Him? He said in His Word, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. He said, pray ye that the Lord of the harvest will send laborers. We need to be praying for Spirit-filled laborers. Some people that's willing to work for God. His sin was purged. You know what that means tonight? Do you know how wonderful that is? His sin was taken care of. His sin was done away with. His sin, Isaiah said in his own words, was unclean lips. That was his problem. I don't know what all that entails. I don't need to know what all that entails. But evidently, him, like every one of us, had trouble with the tongue. Amen. James spoke in the Word of God and James said that this tongue is an unruly evil which no man can tame. James said that this tongue is a little member but it boasteth of great things. He said that it's set on fire of hell. Our tongue tonight is deceitful. Our tongue tonight is wicked. Our tongue tonight speaks so many things that it shouldn't speak. We are all guilty of this. We all say things we shouldn't say. James also taught us to be slow to speak and slow to write. But so many times we get mad and our tongue gets the best of us and we say something before we even think about it. We let words fly that we later regret. This happens in marriages. This happens in parenting. This happens in friendship. This happens in ball games. My friends, I want you to know tonight that we all have a problem like Isaiah with our tongue. We are people of unclean lips. Sometimes we get caught up in gossiping. Sometimes in tailbearing. Some people have trouble uh, with cussing. Some people has trouble with speaking lies. But my friend, the Bible plainly teaches that we all have trouble with our tongue. We should be convicted. We should try to do better. We should want to do better. We should strive to do better. Isaiah said, I'm a man of unclean lips. That's all it took was for him to get the presence of God, for him to get the worship of God, for him to see his sin, for him to openly confess it and admit it and say, oh Lord, I'm undone. I've got unclean lips. And the Bible says that immediately the angel, the seraphim of God, went over to the altar of God and got the burning live coal and came down and touched his lips Tonight, if you need help, if you want help, there's help tonight. Praise God. The same fire that was burning then that helped Isaiah is still 
burning at the altar of God tonight. It's not went out. It can't be put out. It's burning tonight. If you need help, just cry out like Isaiah did and say, woe is me. I need a touch from God. I need to feel the fire of God. Amen. 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 I've been so excited. It's hard to teach when you're studying good stuff like this. Sometimes you just got to preach. I guess you could say tonight that he was touched by an angel, couldn't you? I remember that old show, Touched by an Angel. Isaiah really was. <clears throat> touched by an angel, touched by the fire of God, touched by the power of God. And he laid it upon his mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away and thy sin purge. Praise God. There's nothing no better than when you get cleansed of your sin. When your iniquity is washed away, made whiter than snow, when you're purged and cleansed and that dead stuff is removed from your life, there's nothing no better. I want to notice this. In verses 8 through 9, after he was convicted, he was convicted in verse number 5. Verses 6 and 7, he got clean. But here in verses number 8 and 9, I want you to notice something with me. He got willing. The Bible said, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. He got willing. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see indeed, but perceive not. God gave him instruction. I promise you here tonight, when you get convicted, and then you get clean, and then you get willing, God will give you something to do. He'll leave you with instructions. He'll tell you what you need to do. God don't just leave us hanging out to our own land. He don't leave us just guessing. God will show you. If you really want to know, if you really need to know, if you're really hungry, and you're really desiring to do something for God, get clean, get willing, and listen for the voice of God. You'll feel something pulling you. You'll feel a drawing. You'll feel a stirring. And like Isaiah, you'll get willing, and then you'll go. The encounter with the seraphim, the powerful presence of God. He became willing to do what God would have him to do. This is the place that we all need to get to. This is the place that we need to be. He said, here am I. Send me. Starts with salvation tonight. Knowing you're saved. So many people get saved and that's it. They think it's the end. But my friend, God didn't save us to set us on the shelf. God saved us and He wants to use you. You have a job. You have a calling. You have something in your life that you can do for God. I don't know what it is. You might be a mighty prayer warrior. You might be an encourager. God may want to use you to encourage other people, to encourage your pastor, to encourage people out in this world. God may use you to be a witness. God may use you to be a help. God may use you. I don't know, but you do. It's between you and God. People come to me and they say, what do you think the Lord will want me to do? I say, I don't know. That's between you and God. But I promise you this. If you'll get willing and you'll present yourself ready and able, He'll use you. Amen. We just got to get to that place where Isaiah was. Here am I. Send me. What does God want you to do? What's God want you to do? Are you going to do it? I want you to think about this. I was studying this morning and God gave me this thought on encounters with angels. Jacob had to wrestle with an angel to get well. Balaam had to be stopped in his tracks by an angel to get well. 
Remember that? He was on his little donkey going down the road. The donkey kept stopping, slammed his leg into the wall. Jacob wrestled all night with an angel. Hip thigh joint come out of place. What about old Elijah? He had to be encouraged by an angel to get willing. Remember that? He done give up. He was laying under a juniper tree. He said, I'm ready to die. I've had enough. Jezebel wants to kill me. He had to be encouraged by an angel to get willing. And what about the great prophet Isaiah here? He had to get cleaned up before he became willing. Where are you at tonight? What do you need? Do you need courage? Do you need cleaned up? Do you need to stop dead in your tracks? Are you going the wrong way? God can put somebody, something in your path to stop you and get your attention. Do you need to wrestle a match with God? I promise you ain't no fun. I wrestled with God. Not in the sense that Jacob did. But I have wrestled with God. We never know what it'll take for us to become willing. Boy, it'd be so much easier in this life if we just get willing. I want you to turn with me to Revelations chapter number 4. And I'm going to finish this up on the surface. Now here in this chapter, they are not called by name. But I am 100% satisfied that these are the same heavenly beings that we find in Isaiah chapter number 6. This is also a spirit vision of the heavenly scene. Revelation chapter number 4. The Bible says, After this I looked, and behold, the door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet, talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, John said, And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one that sat on the throne. Here, here John is seeing the same throne that Isaiah seen. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne, listen to this, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts, listen to this, had each of them six wings about him. And they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night Listen to what they say. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to Him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever. The four and twenty elders fall down before Him that sat on the throne and worship Him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. Here in Revelation chapter 4, we see another heavenly scene. And we see right here some beasts, the Bible calls them, describes them, that sound just exactly like these that we have around the throne of God in Isaiah chapter number 6. Having six wings of peace, and crying, Holy, 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 unto the Lord God Almighty. These are seraphims tonight that we've read and studied about the Word of God. And to me, they're just so interesting. And it's just amazing what the Bible tells us about them. And I love this study. I'm so thankful for it. 
I hope and pray tonight that it's been a blessing to you and that you're learning and we're learning together out of the Word of God. Amen. Does anybody tonight have anything on their heart that will bring glory to God? Bless you, Lina. I just want to say God's been so good to me. I mean, He's blessed me. Bless you. Amen. Yeah, God's been good. Bless you, Alma. We're all patient, so you can't see us. We're going to take our time and still there. Amen. Anybody else tonight? I know a lot's changed for me since I went out there and got baptized. And I do get trials every day. And a lot of it is children. But I'm thankful for them, and I have to get on my knees and pray every night and just thank him for the little things I got. And I know he's going to bring me through all this. Bless you, David. Appreciate that. Anybody else tonight? A word of praise, a word of testimony, a word of thanksgiving. God is so good. I just want to praise his holy name. Amen. I'm so thankful. To save me and my family, and I'm just so thankful every day. Amen. Certainly been good to be in the house of God tonight. We're thankful and appreciate each and every one of you. I want to charge you and challenge you to pray every day. Pray much for the service Sunday morning. Pray that we'll see somebody, I mean, just following this altar under Holy Ghost, real deal, true conviction, get born again, washed in the blood of Jesus, gloriously saved. Pray for that. Let's pray that God will move in our midst Sunday morning. I went to St. Leo McCray the other day, and boy, did we have a good time and a good visit. Leo had told me, she said, my grandpa... She said he used to pray, and boy, I've been trying to pray. She said he'd pray for a Holy Ghost, heaven sent, sin killing revival. That's what we need. We need a sin killing revival. When you get where Isaiah got, hey man, where he got in the presence of God and around the worship of God, it killed the sin out in his life. He had to get right with God. I promise you one thing. When you're getting under the Holy Ghost, you'll make a choice. You'll either get in or you'll get out. You can't set time. You can't stand it. You have to make a decision. We need for people to get in the back of the decision. It's a shame tonight, sweet God, that sinners can come into our church and sit there and go back out unchanged. Amen. I'm telling you, when sinners walk into the house of God, they ought to feel something. Yes. They ought to be drawn and yes. feel the pull. And it ought to change them, amen. amen. That's what we need tonight. Amen. So church, let's pray. Help me. I need help. Pray for me, amen. We love you tonight. We thank God.